What's up, YouTube? HPJ here, and I'm coming at you guys with my Sky Striker deck profile for the month of November. And I did a couple, I did some massive changes to uh, the last variation of it to keep it together with what's currently going on. The sad thing is, I have only one big regret, and that is not being able to run this at regionals. Um, this past weekend, I think it was the big, one of the biggest regrets that I have had um, in terms of just playing this game overall. But I did take some time to switch this up to really build it around in having testing it since. So, without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> so, the only monster in this variation is like three copies of Sky Striker Ace Rex. Now, we move on to all the spells. I'll start off with the Sky Striker spells. I'm running three copies of Sky Striker Ace, Sky Striker Mobilize Engage. I'm running two copies of Shark Cannon, two copies of Hercules Base, and two copies of Area Zero. Then I'm running one copy of Widow Anchor, one copy of Hornet Drones, one copy of multi Roll, one copy of Afterburner, one copy of Eagle Booster, one copy of Jamming Wave. So that is it for all of the Sky Striker spells. Now on to the rest of the spells that I'm running. I'm running three copies of Card of Demise, with three copies of Call by the Grave, three copies of Cosmic Cyclone, and three copies of Foolish Burial of Goods. Then I'm running one Metal Flows Fusion, one Terraforming, one Upside Goblin, and one Reinforcements of the Army. So that is it for all of my spells. And I believe that is the heaviest part of this deck, actually, is the large amount of spell cards in it. Alright, and then we move on to the last part of the main deck, and that is simply all of the traps. Uh, three copies of There Can Only Be One. And three copies of Lost Wing. So that is it for all this all the cards in the main deck. 40 in total. Now I'm gonna move on to my extra. My extra deck consists of three copies of the beautiful Sky Striker Ace, Shizuku, two copies of Hayate, one copy of, of Kagari, and one copy of Kina. Then I'm running one copy of Hita the Flame Charmer Ablaze. And strangely enough, I am running one copy of Winnie, the Wind Charmer Verdant. I'm running one Nightmare Phoenix, one Nightmare Cerberus, one Barrel Low Dragon, one Barrel Sword Dragon, one Tapologic Bomber Dragon, and one Seriuja Skull Dragon. So that's pretty much it for both the main and the extra deck. So as it stands here, the only monster in this variation that's being ran in terms of the main deck is the one, the three Sky Striker Ace Ray. Ray pretty much has the ability to swap herself out for a Sky Striker Ace monster in the extra deck and put it into the extra monster zone. When a extra, when a link monster, when a link monster that is a Sky Striker is is removed from the field, either by battle or card effect, you can special slam her to the field in uh, place of that monster. So pretty much you can just ta put her back onto the field and then she can tag herself out for another Sky Striker Elite monster. That way you can keep some pressure onto your opponent, especially when you want to, you know, search your deck or you want to send something to the graveyard or you want to use some of your added card effects um, to get some additional boosts. Like, Gray pretty much is the main focus of the deck till we get Rose. And then once we have Rose here in the TCG, a lot of the TCG setup is going to be very different um, when Rose comes out. So that's Ray. Now we move on to all, the sky, all to the spells. So the Sky Striker spells are lined up like this. Um, mobilize, engage, pretty much your search and draw power in one. Note that all, most of the Sky Striker spells say have additional effects because if you have three uh, or more spell cards in the graveyard, the Sky's additional effect is to draw uh, one additional card from your deck, which gives it both search and draw power for the Sky Strikers. And the crazy thing about this card itself overall is just how much of an amazing setup it is for job power. Like you can flash in the Sky Striker engine with various decks and it makes it a lot faster. I don't know if it makes it consistent, but some cases have said otherwise. But for the most part, Mobilize Engage is one of the big 
um, support cards for this set. Can it possibly get hit? We don't know. I'm going to possibly say yes because I look at three of the other spells that got hit for the Sky Strikers, and this is probably one of the many that is potentially on the list of cards to get hit because of how powerful this deck still is. We move on to the two cannons of uh, Shark Cannon that I'm running. Shark Cannon was probably the odd man of it next to um, Hercules Base because these two cards, um, most people probably just run one of at a point. I'm running the two of each because, uh, well, Shark Cannon itself is pretty much my banish. It's my DD Crow if I'm not sighting in DD Crows. Or if I choose to sight in DD Crows, it's just an additional banish. But I can also get the chance to special summon that monster if I have three or more spells in the graveyard. Hercules Base is, uh, can you equip two on a to a Sky Striker monster, to any monster. The monster attacks one monster and destroys it. It has the ability to attack once again in a row. Uh, but it cannot attack directly, which is perfectly fine because most of the time I'm using it for its other additional effect, which is, um, if you have three or more spells in your graveyard, you can, and you destroy that monster, you draw a card. When this card on your field is sent to graveyard, you can select three Sky Striker cards and shuffle them back into your deck, except for Hercules Base. So it's pretty much a pot, it's pretty much a recovery card and a decent enough equip spell, um, when you count to it. Next up is, of course, the field spell. This is Area Zero. Um, Area Zero's effect pretty much can work in combination with Ray. You can send Ray to the... You can target Ray with Area Zero's effect. Excavate the top three cards of your deck. And if any of them are Sky Striker card, you add them to your hand. But the card that you target, it gets sent to the graveyard. You can, in exchange with this and, of course, multi-roll, you can swap Ray out for one of the Link monsters. Ray is already in the graveyard, so she won't be affected by this card effect if it did miss or didn't miss in terms of what Sky Striker card is getting. And if it's blown up, you can always summon a Sky Striker Ace Ray or any Sky Striker monster in your, in your main deck and put it onto the field. So once we get Rose, we'll really see a lot of that going on. Um, really want to see how Rose is doing because I'm still testing out Rose um, at the current time. So... She's not too bad of a monster, to be honest with you. I'm just waiting to see what more setup she'll have for that. We go into the one of the Sky Strikers, and that's pretty much Widow Anchor, Hornet Drone, and Mobilize Engage. These are, I mean, multi roll. These are pretty much the big three that got hit in the TCG. Multi roll's ability to send other cards to the graveyard so that your spells cannot be negated for the turn uh, does help in a lot of cases, so a lot of your big spells don't get hurt. Uh, during the end phase for a number of spells that you played, you can put onto the field face down the number of cards that are in your graveyard with different names that are Sky Striker cards, uh, which does have its benefits there, but they are all banished once they're used. Uh, so you gotta pick and choose which ones you want to put back. Hornet Drones pretty much makes the token, um, that's a Sky, pretty much makes the Sky Striker Ace token. Uh, if you have three or more spells in the graveyard, it makes... Uh, that monster gained 1500 attack in defense, but you're mainly using that card as an additional card to help you link summon. Uh, Widow Anchor is pretty much a fag veiler and brain control in one. You snatch, you can snatch their opponent, well, snatch his steel and bring in a fag veiler in one because you have three or more cards in graveyard. You can take the monster that whose effect you are negating, and pretty much it's to negate the effects of a monster on the field, which is why it's at. One, because of how powerful each of these cards are and how resourceful those cards' effects have been for the archetype itself. We move on from these three. And we go on to the rest of my one ups. Um, I got Afterburner and Jamming Wave. Afterburner and Jamming Wave pretty much act like this. Um, Afterburner destroys face up monsters, but if you have three or more spells in the graveyard, it destroys the spell or trap card on the field. Jamming Wave destroys a set card on the field, a set spell or trap card on the field, and if it Three or more cards in the graveyard. Yeah, they actually destroy a monster that's on the field. So pretty much they're uh, kind of both opposites of each other. But they have really great setups to just get rid of a lot of things. That you probably would want to get rid of as soon as possible. The only other one of that I'm running in the Sky Striker Ace spell lineup is the Eagle Booster. Um, which makes your monster immune. Which makes any monster on the field immune to card effects. But if you have three or more spells in the graveyard, it'll give them an additional effect of being immune by battle. So, that's the Eagle Booster. And then we move on to the rest of the spells. Um, triple Card of Demise, which has been doing 
an extremely good enough job in the archetype itself to actually be played in one of my variations of it. What you're supposed to do with this card for the most part is it's supposed to help you get into a lot of your traps. Uh, if you're not already doing that by drawing them through cards like Upstar Goblin, uh, the additional effect of um, mobilizing gauge, and of course, uh, Metaphose Fusion and its draw power effect. But for the most part, you'll have no hands at the end of the turn, and as you can see, I'm running no hand traps, so I'm really just relying on a lot of the traps and spells. But for the most part, with the way the recovery and the setup is for the Sky Strikers, that shouldn't be too hard of it, too much of an issue. Um, and just for what it seems, Demise is an option if you want to play Demise. But if you don't want to play Demise, you can always just splash it back in a lot of your um, your heavy hitters for your hand traps. Like your Ash Blossoms, your uh, Ghost Bells, your Ghost Ogres, and all of that that you wanted to play. So next is Call by the Grave, and I think this is just more of a self-explanatory type of card. Hitting cards in the graveyard are trying to activate. Hitting cards in the graveyard uh, in correspondence with monsters are trying to activate their effect. A uh, great way to hit hand traps, a great way to hit monster effects if multiple copies of that monster exist in the deck and some of them are in the graveyard. And it's a great way to slow down your opponent. An additional spell card as well. Uh, then we have Cosmic Cyclone to get rid of... Uh, spells and traps on the board at a cost of a thousand points, but instead of destroying them, it automatically it'll just banish them, which helps a little more than MST and its destruction effect. Uh, the Foolish Burial of Goods in combination with Metal Flows Fusion, but you can really use Foolish Burial of Goods with any spell card and still get, gain the same effect of sending a card to the graveyard, sending a spell card to the graveyard once a turn. Uh, with Metal Flows Fusion, you can send it to the graveyard and have it add as an additional spell. So once you do fill up three or more spells, you can send it back to the deck, shuffle, and draw one off of it. Then, or for the most part with Metal Flows Fusion, you can probably pop this card with practically anything and send it to the graveyard as a freebie. So that way you can shuffle it back into the deck and then draw off of it. You can use it with cards like multi Row, you can use it with cards like um, Area Zero and benefit from their effects. And then the rest of my one ofs are terraforming to search for my field spell. Star Goblin for additional draw power and reinforcement of the army to help search for Sky Striker Ace Ray. Then, for the trap cards, of course, there can only be one since there are a lot of decks that do like to stand up to being to only playing uh, one particular type. This is a card that shuts them down. Kind of also in the fear of this card getting hit on the next list because of the fact that it gives Sky Strikers a bit of a more edge to their opponents than anything. Especially considering the fact Sky Strikers can go into multiple monsters. I have seen it. There have been times where this deck, when this archetype can literally go into multiple cards and multiple monsters, literally off of one or two cards. So, this is pretty much the anti-meta to an anti-meta of a meta deck. Then, we have the Lost Winds, which pretty much acts like an additional effect veiler. I mean, this card's in, when this card is activated, you select a special summon monster on the field, negate its attack, and then half negate its effect and half its original attack. And then if a monster is special summon uh, from the graveyard, well, no special summon, and you have this card in the graveyard, you can banish it. To no, you can set this card, but it leaves the field if it's um, it leaves the field when it's banished. So you can pretty much activate it again. So pretty much hit a lot of cards uh, with a lot of nasty counter effects. So that is pretty much it for the main, and then for the extra, um, Suzuku, uh, who can pretty much search your deck during the end phase for any Star Trek or spell card that was not played this turn. For the number of spell cards in your graveyard, your opponent's monsters lose 100 attack and defense for each one. Uh, then we have Sky Striker Ace Hayate. Uh, she can attack your opponent directly. When she attacks, when she inflicts damage to your opponent, she will be able to act, send a Star Trek or spell card from your deck to the grave. Kagari, one of the biggest aces to this deck. Uh, when she's special summon, you can search your deck for, you search your, you look in your graveyard and add one Strike Striker Ace, one Strike Striker spell card and add it to your hand. And then she gains attack equal to the number of spell cards in your graveyard. Then you have Strike Striker Ace Kina. Um, every, time a Strike Striker, every time a spell card activates, immediately after it resolves, you'll gain 100 life points. And I believe when this card is special summon, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls, and it can't attack until your opponent's uh, until the end of your opponent's next turn. So although she is a stall out, she pretty much is here to help you with 
decks that like to burn or decks that play wave motion cannons and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it for the full lineup of Sky Strikers. The only one that's at one is Kagari. And I'm only running one Kina because I don't think multiple of Kina was necessary. If anything, I'll probably just bump up Hayate to three instead of two. And then we move on to the rest of the non Sky Strikers spell. A non Sky Striker Ace extra deck monsters. Uh, I'm running one um, Hita and one Win. So, Win and Hita actually are very randomized in this, but for the most part, uh, they're here to help you against decks that are Wind and Fire. Uh, mainly, you can hurt, um, what is it? What's that deck? Oh, I'm trying to remember what's on my head. Salamander Great. You can hit Salad with this. And the crazy thing is, the reason why you can hit Salad with this is because you can steal some of the monsters from the graveyard. Um, to do the link summon. You know, she gains her additional abilities as well when she's on the field. If, she, if you are running cards like um, Ash Blossom and Joyous Ring, you can search her, search it from the deck. When this card is destroyed by battle card effect, it was link summon to the field. Same thing with winning, because you can search for Droll and Lockbird with this card's effect. Also, in case in point, um, she, she really does, I don't really see her with much advent against wind. There's only decks I can think of are wind that can actually be good against. Uh, are Rocket, because I think most of them are wind. Harpy, if that's ever a random occurrence of running into a Harpy deck. Um, and I really just think that's about it. So I don't really can think of any other... Well, Dragoonities, if that's ever the case. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to splash these in, because at least I can get to search for some of the hand traps that I do run in the side. If I want to decide to run hand traps in the main. Uh, that, uh, Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Cerberus. Cerberus to help deal with monsters in the main monster zone. And Phoenix to deal with spells and traps. Uh, then I got my big my big four. Uh, Barrel Sword Dragon. Barrel Little Dragon. Barrel Sword Dragon. Um, Tapologic Bomber Dragon. And Sarah Usual Skull Dread. Now, it may be a little difficult to summon these monsters in this deck. Just due to the fact that they are linked for monsters. However... Uh, there's a monster known as Ghost Reaper and Winter Chariots, and because most decks do have these monsters, if you can take them out with her card effect, you really don't have to deal with them much. Um, and they can't be monster reborn and stuff like that because they weren't properly summoned, which can also be a thing. But, uh, Tabalogic Bomber Dragon was seen in a lot of Sky Shaker Ace decks prior to, just because we had, um, summon sorceries and the whole combo with Jet Synchron. And in the whole Jet Synchron Needle Fiber thing. But the TCG doesn't have Needle Fiber. So you're just pretty much just trying to use ways with Jet Synchron. One for one and stuff like that. To really keep the bases on. Getting those additional monsters to the board. And then you can go and tap a Logic Bomber Dragon. Um, to really blow up cards that every time someone wants to settle something to an area where you point it to. Blow up the monsters on the field. Uh, Sparrow Sword Dragon. Swing. Switch the monster to defense. Swing again. And then once the turn, you can gain attack equal to have the attack of a monster that's on the board. Sarah Yuja for the draw power, for the additional attack buff. And then uh, Barrel Sword to snatch an opponent's monster and swing with it if needed. But that monster goes to the graveyard during the end phase of the next turn. No, at the end of the turn. So that's pretty much it for my Sky Striker Ace deck profile. And I hope you guys did enjoy this video. And if you guys... Um, Want to see more content, of course, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll have some more videos and stuff up for you guys as the week goes on. Thank you guys so much for watching. Annie PJ, signing out. Take care.